When you talk about PSA and fiat, like what's your outlook for these big, you know, cross-border mergers when you have some regulatory issues still in the pipeline where it's been a softer market in Europe? But what do you see for next year? Uh, it was a, I guess the market was down 20% cross-border in Europe. Uh, I think with Brexit uh, possibly uh, having a, a conclusion, it's a near-term conclusion, uh, I think with, with values uh, being more agreeable in Europe, I think you'll see more. I think the fiat transaction and PSA transaction is, is unique in many ways uh, since it is about, uh, about technological dis disruption and it's about two companies coming together uh, to be able to be competitive in the autonomous and electric car world and I think it's a very important transaction. So with that said, I know a lot of people believe that this wave of disruption is going to keep propping up the deal market, but a lot of the deals we've seen so far this year are in healthcare, are in technology, are in the sectors that everybody is worried about into the next election cycle in the U.S. How is that supposed to pair up? I mean, in, in terms of the deal universe, are people really worried about the Democrats? Well, people are worried about a changing, uh, a, a changing um, tax policy, a changing regulatory policy. I mean, we, we, saw, we see what's happening with the, uh, uh, with the state uh, antitrust uh, coming in on the, um, uh, the Sprint transaction, uh, despite the fact that it was signed off by, uh, by the, by the uh, federal government. So yeah, th there's worries that if Democrats come in that you're gonna have more regulation. Uh, but I think, again, the overarching theme in today's market that's not going to stop is the need for growth. And that's what's driving most of the acquisitions, so the healthcare acquisitions, the recent spat of uh, acquisitions done by Big Pharma in the cancer therapy world is about growth. Uh, and the second thing is about, uh, is about uh, dislocation, the technological, technological dislocation that forces old world companies to make very important decisions, may, very important acquisitions to compete. So we know the obvious ones, like in media, mm -hmm. uh, and we know old media has done an enormous number of transactions in order to compete against new media. It has to happen. But to Shanali's point, when you're <coughs> facing a, a major, a potentially major change uh, in administrations, in regulation, does that cause people to then try to front run and sort of get deals done? Or does it create the opposite effect where they say, let's just wait until after the election and see who wins and, and what the direction's going to be? I, I, think, I think it could be a combination of the two. I, I think there are plenty of transactions that are in the queue that people are going to move hard on and I think they're going to be more concerned with antitrust and whether they would get done. So yes, it would be a better, uh, this is a better administration from an antitrust perspective, mm -hmm. clearly. So yes, you will see those that, that could have antitrust considerations. Now having said that, CFIUS, which is a big issue and it's going to be a big issue in PSA, uh, has been tougher under our existing administration and less and sort of less restrictive under our uh, the Obama administration. So moving to valuations for a second here, because another constraint <coughs> here is that companies are paying a lot for some of the deals we're seeing get done. Private equity valuations, Morgan Stanley has said on average, is the highest since it's been since 2000. And so how is that going to impact the demand for deals moving forward? By the way, we've also seen some investors really get involved in high profile deals, tall grass, mm -hmm. Hudson's Bay with investors kind of coming in and wanting more? Well, investors fundamentally want more. Uh, so uh, I think it, it, it's two different issues. One issue is uh, high prices being paid for private, for private equity transactions. And yes, that, that's put a damper on private equity. And it's actually good to see that uh, the private equity, private equity market's been down 10% this year, and they're being disciplined. Uh, and every one of the people who I speak to lament about how much they have to pay for businesses. Uh, the flip side to that is you're seeing a lot of selling in the private equity because the values are high, so they're putting many of their companies up to marketplace. When it comes to the strategic side, I hate to say this because it sounds like you know, a typical banker, pay up, pay up, uh, but it's not about price, it's about what your objective is and I think the overarching objective for companies is how do they either drive growth or how do they sustain themselves in an ever-changing environment. So while value makes a difference and you'd rather pay less than pay more, it is a function of whether it achieves those ob objectives. And so you saw the multiples being paid for the cancer therapy drugs and they're enormous. 
but but uh, you know, I, I like to go back to old transactions because then you could see whether it made sense. What did everyone say when when Facebook bought uh, um, uh, WeChat? No, the um, Instagram. Instagram. They said, how could you pay 12 billion or some crazy number? Well. So what about, something remarkable this year is the league tables. You see boutique banks over a lot of the European banks, Evercore right behind the top U.S. banks, PJT among the top 10. What's going on here? Is this here to stay where boutique banks can continue to gain more share? Have we capped out quite a bit? I mean, there's certainly a lot of boutique banks. You've been dealing with rising competition for many years. Uh, this is here to stay. This phenomenon is here to stay. And it's not actually that new a phenomenon. It's just been growing uh, dramatically in size. I mean, we, we date back, P.J. Solomon dates back 30 years. We're one of the original ones, Wolfenson, way back when uh, Felix Rotan had just passed away, had his own boutique. Uh, but this notion of specialization, of having advice being core to what you do, uh, is becoming more and more important in this changing world because it's not about financial engineering any longer. It's not about how you use leverage and your balance sheet and creative financing uh, uh, schemes in order to create value. It's about how you really understand the fundamental underp underpinnings of the industries that you're competing with uh, and how you should proceed uh, in that treacherous, and treacherous environment uh, uh, to do strategic transactions that will enhance shareholder value. So this notion of specialization of people who focus only on advice is, is going to grow. And we see it in our business, uh, uh, you know, uh, small by Evercore standards, but growing dramatically. And our global franchise, which is part of the Natixis, uh, Natixis uh, network, yeah. Uh, is is become uh, uh, very exciting and very successful.